I have to give a shout out to one of my subscribers. Forgive me if I forgot who you were because I believe you wrote it in my comment section. That's why I always suggest that you email me. Um, that way I can shout you out properly. But if you are watching this video, you know exactly who you are. And also, I have to give a shout out to uh, Santee Walden because I think he was one of the few people that I saw that actually did a commentary about this guy. Listen. You would think that with Aretha Franklin's funeral, we could do like a one and done type of video where we could explain or discuss how much we liked what we liked and everything like that. But I'm finding that there's quite a few things coming out about this that we did not like. And that's not a good thing. But you know what? It would be hard because the funeral was very a long funeral. I think Aretha probably has one of the longest funerals I've ever seen. Um, So far, I spoke on the bishop and the ariana grande situation um and now i'm about to talk oh then i talked about rick snyder being there now i'm about to talk about this guy his name is reverend jasper williams and when the, my subscriber had mentioned to me was i going to do a video about it, i was like who was that and then they told me he was the guy that got up there and did the eulogy and i was like okay i was still kind of lost because i was going back and forth with the program and like i said it was a long program and then they broke it down even further and said he was the guy that talked about the black on black crime thing i was like oh okay now i know who you're talking about and then i had a chance to listen to snippets of his eulogy and trust me it was hard for me to even get through it and some of y'all would probably thinking the same exact thing so i'm not even gonna like go through the entire thing of what he said but I'm going to pull out certain things of what he said and just make it, you know, put it out there of how ridiculous it sounded. First off, I don't know if he was giving a eulogy or trying to audition for a, a um, position at Fox News. Because he pulled out almost every white conservative talking point that is thrusted upon black people in the establishment all the time. He brought up the whole black on black crime thing without actually saying it. He basically said black lives can't matter and black lives should not matter until black people stop killing each other. So basically he in a in a broadened statement he said that he was talking about black on black crime. Then he went on the topic of single mothers and how they can't raise sons and you know, first he had to soften the blow by saying that single mothers you know there's nothing against you and everything like that. If you are a single mother, you've done, you know, a good job raising your kids, so on and so forth. But then he had to come back and say, well, there's no way that a single mother, a single black mother, can raise a son. So I'm almost certain that probably pissed off the mothers who ha are raising their sons, you know, on their own to be, you know, good uh, black men in society. That was probably one of the only few parts that I kind of sort of agree with him where he was saying that they basically saying that we need to get back to a family unit, you know, having both the mother and the father in the home. But the way that he put it out there in front of the world like this and at this function will have a lot of people over at Fox News just just slobbering at the mouths like yeah he's saying everything we want him to say he's saying everything we want him to say see this is exactly why we don't uh why you don't talk in mixed company because when they have these when you have situations such as this they're going to take whatever you have run with it or they're going to spin and then run with whatever it is they come up with and my thing is why are you talking about something like this why are you talking about, about the black community's problems and issues at a function that is supposed to be honoring the life and legacy of Aretha Franklin? I could have sworn the eulogy was supposed to be more so of a bigger dedication through word about the deceased. Like what does single mother, single being a single mother or black so-called black on black crime have to do with Aretha Franklin? I'm still I'm I'm trying to fi I'm trying to figure that out. Like I don't I don't get it. Like you could have talked about this at any other time or any other day with whoever, but you chose this that day to get on that podium 
and spill all that rhetoric that is spewed out every single day on Fox News and any other conservative network about black people and you're black yourself. I would like to know what his life is like growing up. Like he's, he, it's almost like he was speaking in a tone like he was just better than us. And I find that a lot of pastors and ministers and reverends often do that. Like they feel like they get to a certain point and then they can say about say anything and feel that they are just the upper echelon and you know they are just above anybody else and they are, some of them feel like they're above criticism but you know what's so funny if the black pastors in the black church as much money as they get weekly annually were actually to put the money into programs or back into their communities and actually help to clean it up then maybe that topic of discussion would not have to happen as often. So to you, Jasper Williams, and to everyone else who is like him, y'all need to be more worried about your community and less about your mansions and your cars and your planes, Creflo, steal your dollar, and your exotic trips and, you know, your side mistresses and what. It's funny because he speaks in a tone, you know, shoot, you might as well have took him off and put Daryl Scott up there because, you know, at least we know what he's all about. He would have got up there and did it for free. He wouldn't have, he wouldn't like, oh, they, oh, Daryl Scott will pay. You know, he felt like, no, I will do it for free. And we know he'll do it for free. He does it all the time, every single day on Twitter. That, if you ever get a chance, just for one or a couple of seconds, go over to Daryl Scott's Twitter page if you can deal with it and just watch the rhetoric just spew into words all up and down his timeline and kissing Trump's ass and then doing, you know, and doubling down on the black community as if he's not black himself. And see, it's talking points like the ones he was spewing out that, like I said, white people will latch on and they will take their, his words and twist them. And then when we cl when we try to clap back, that white person will say, well, <coughs> I cite for you this guy, this Jasper Williams. He said on this date at Aretha Franklin's funeral that so-and-so and so-and-so, -so, and then they'll throw it in your face as if it's the gospel truth when it's not. I bet you won't find a white a priest get up there for someone else's event. Oh, for example, like John McCain and do his eulogy and talk about all the meth and heroin and opiates and, and bestiality and rape and molestation that the white community is doing to its own, you won't find that. I could sum this up in a few words. Jasper Williams was off code. As a matter of fact, I think I can I think that's what I'm gonna title this video. Jasper Reverend Jasper Williams was off code. To get up there the way that he did and speak about the black community the way that he did at Aretha Franklin's funeral, which was not the time nor the place to do something like this. There's a time and place for everything. Now, you want to know what's so funny? People cracked down hard on Bill Cosby when he gave that pound cake speech, which was not much different than what he's doing right now. But I wonder, will they crack down on this guy? Oh, they probably won't because he has reverend in front of his name and black people love going to church and praising God to a deity that doesn't even exist. A blonde haired, white, blue eyed person that was created by the in the image of of and by another white man. Oh, but Bill Cosby, oh, we just got to make sure he gets taken down because of hearsay and because he gave that speech about black people in mixed company. See how that works? I bet they're not going to call for him to be removed from the uh, from the podium or to step down out of his church. They're not going to do that. Because a lot of the quote unquote black Christians will back him up, especially those of a certain age and of a certain gender. I hope y'all can read between those lines. This is exactly I said the Aretha Franklin funeral. 
in so many ways, in a lot of ways, just proved why I don't go to church like that anymore. Like I said, I don't go to church nowadays unless it's for weddings and funerals. And I actually stand by that. Believe it or not, the last couple of times, unfortunately, that I've been to a church were for funerals, unfortunately. But that's really all I have to say as it pertains to this. Y'all let me know what you think down in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. The links to my merch will be down below. I'll talk to you in the next one.